In today's video, I wanna share the only recipe you need, and that is not an exaggeration, because this dish is not only delicious, fast, requires no knife work, and only two pans, but also serves as a framework for an almost endless number of possibilities. So I'm gonna cover the recipe, the techniques that make it possible, as well as two delicious variations that you should try. So let's dive right in. I started with two chicken thighs that I seasoned with salt and a Thai curry spice. I let them sit for 30 minutes to absorb the spices and then rubbed it with a red Thai curry paste. And I happened for the first time in my life to have a broiler that is actually accessible in my oven. So I used that to put some delicious color onto the thigh. But if you don't have a broiler, you can use a 450 degree oven instead. Then I transferred the meat to a pot and added enough coconut milk to come about halfway up the thigh and simmered it over low heat for 15 minutes. And while that was cooking, I put baby broccoli onto the same sheet tray, seasoned it with grapeseed oil and salt, and put it in the oven for five minutes. Then I sprinkled some torn up Thai basil leaves on top. I'm a big fan of this type of basil, not only because of the delicious, subtle anise flavor it has, but also because it lasts much longer than Italian basil, which I think is why I'm increasingly seeing it at so many grocery stores. And that's it. That's the whole dish. I ate this with white rice and it is surprisingly delicious and took only about 20 minutes to make. While it may seem just like a very simple Thai style curry, this exact framework of a spice powder, a paste, an aromatic liquid with a grain and a vegetable is widely applicable for many different styles. Take this next version, which I seasoned with smoked paprika and then coated with some of the sauce from a can of chipotles in adobo and then broiled just like before. I cooked this in a pot with a four ounce can of mild diced green chilies and a can full of water. This may have you asking why use a high heat so-called dry cooking method like the oven or broiler to then only douse it with a liquid. But because of the complexity of flavors you get during the chemical reactions that occur above the boiling point of water, this is arguably the quickest way to make a delicious sauce. As the paste and spices lose moisture and then start to brown via Maillard or caramelization, you have an incredibly delicious base for a sauce, which can then be extracted into the aromatic liquid you cook the meat in. While that was simmering, I put 200 grams of frozen corn onto the tray I'd cook the thighs on, and then added a single clove of crushed garlic, with some olive oil and salt, and cooked it in the oven for eight minutes. Once that's out, you can throw the garlic clove away because it has already basically perfumed the entire tray with a delicious flavor. Once the thighs had hit that 15 minute mark, I swirled in some sour cream, which just like butter is an emulsion of water and fat. So generally should only be added at the end once the heat is turned off. This one I ate with black rice, which is a delicious and protein dense grain that I really think is not eaten enough. Maybe it's because the package instructions usually leave you with something that's either too chewy or way too cooked. So my method as always, whenever I'm in doubt with a grain is to blanch it in a pot of boiling water that I season with enough salt to make it taste almost like a well-seasoned soup. It took about 30 minutes and then I strained it. This dish in particular was super tasty when I finished it with cilantro. And I think you could easily pull it together in the time it takes for the rice to cook. If you've ever heard the term flavor profile before and wondered what it meant, these dishes are a good example of different flavor profiles, similar composition, different flavors. This last one is no different. I started by seasoning the chicken with cumin and salt and then rubbing it with harissa paste, which is a North African pepper and spice paste that has been only a recent addition to my arsenal and I cannot praise highly enough. After I broiled the meat, I cooked it in water, which may seem unexciting, but is always a viable option when doing this type of low and slow moist cooking. Once the thighs were done and the heat was off, I added a little bit of buttermilk, which definitely took this cook to the next level, but is optional. And buttermilk, just like sour cream and butter, is an emulsion and in fact, a particularly delicate one. So let the liquid cool down for a few minutes before you pour it in so it doesn't curdle and separate. The vegetables for this one were zucchini, which I split in half lengthwise and then in half again, and then cut those on an angle into halves. I put them on the same sheet tray with some cherry tomatoes and roasted it for about 10 minutes. And then I added some torn up mint, which tends to do pretty well when it's cooked. So I put this back in the oven for a minute. And then while the vegetables were still warm, I added some diced up feta cheese. If you haven't tried feta and brine before, do yourself a favor and pick some up next time you're at the grocery store. I'm usually guilty of buying the blocks or crumbles, but feta in its traditional brine is far superior. 
This one I had with couscous, which at least according to my wife is commonly thought of as a healthy grain, but in reality is just a pasta like any other. Personally, I prefer the larger so-called pearl couscous, and it is the only pasta you will ever catch me toasting. Cooking it in a sort of risotto style while you slowly add liquid while stirring admittedly gets the best result, and I do usually cook that way, but after a long day of making all this food, I opted for the easy option and cooked it just like I would any other pasta. This plate I finished with lemon zest, and lemon juice. For whatever reason, I rarely cook with these sort of Mediterranean flavors at home, and they are always exciting. But anyway, that's all for me on this one. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon.